Hello viewers, welcome to my channel PC Geo Kimber Light, a source of diamond. Today we are going to see an important topic from igneous pathology, that is the megascopic textures and structures of igneous rock. I am Dr. Sajjan Umbrekar, Associate Professor and Head, Department of Geology, Anjuman Thayu Islam, Spuna College of Art, Science and Commerce, Kampole, Maharashtra, India. It is affiliated to Savitri Bhai Pule Pune University. It is SPPU Pune and formerly it is known as University of Pune. Now this textures and structure topic we have been divided into introduction, characters of rock, textures of in igneous rock, structures in igneous rock, then the very important points to be remembered. So this is what we have, the textures, structures of igneous rock. First we'll see the introduction. The textures and structures of igneous rock. Now, what is the definition of the structure or what is the meaning of the textures? Texture is nothing but it is the mutual arrangement of a crystal within the rock. Whatever the mineral which are crystallized from the molten magma and how these minerals are assembled, whether the molten magma come on the surface of the lava or it just below the surface or at a greater depth where the crystals have been formed and these crystals within the rock, they are how they have been packed together, how they have been arrangement is there, that we call as the textures. Now, whatever the rocks are there, these rocks may have the varieties of the middle, maybe a coarse grain, medium grain, fine grain, they may be of euhydral, subhydral, anhydral crystal, and in addition, there may be the glass also present. When the magma come on the surface as a lava, if pulled down rapidly, then there is a chance to have a glass along with the mineral. So, textures and structure is nothing but it is a mutual relation of the mineral within the rock, or it is called as aggregates of mineral. But that will be not a clear definition. But here, how the minerals are arranged? Say, example, in a class, we have an arrangement of 20 students to sit. So, the, whatever the benches are there, they are arranged in the two rows. Now, when the students have 20, then there will be 100% arrangement. So, packing will be a proper one. So, arrangement like a middle, all middles are arranged compact now. There is no interspace. But instead of 20, if there is 15 students are present, 5 are missing. So, that may be a glass. We will say that now there will be glasses there. So, that may be there. Or might be there will stand. So, how these middles are arranged, there will be a different pattern. But in case, if there is the third year to where the students, there will be second year TYBS student, first year TYBS student and MSc 1 and MSc 2. So five different classes students are now sitting on that particular 20 uh, what we have the sitting arrangement. So out of this, the first year student will be five, second year will be 10. Now, the second year will be, uh, third year will be one student, then MSc will be three and again second year we have one. So how these uh, students are arranged? That will give you the arrangement. So that arrangement every time there will be change pattern is there and that what we have called as a texture. This is a simple way to explain you the what we have the textures. We have to take it into the account. When we are going to make up account, we are given the number. So the relative amount of crystalline, how much the crystals are there and how much is the glass is there. So then we have to see their shape, size and the arrangement which will be there. So girls on one side, boys on one side. So that will be the and which the different type of arrangement we can make, combination will be, we are going to have the textures will be there. So, the textures of a rock is defined as the intimate mutual relation of the mineral and a glass matter in a rock made up of uniform aggregates. The rock textures are significant characters of the rock. They will throw a light on the genesis of these particular rock has been formed, how this particular texture has been formed, the genesis and the environmental condition. That is the two important things they will be giving you a throw a light on that. So, what is the structure? Structure is nothing but the surface of the rock showing you a feature. For example, I'll show you this one. Now, this is the crystals are there, the lab shaped crystals are there. They are the fragile clays and surrounded by the fine grain crystal. So, this is a one type of arrangement, coarse grain surrounded by the smaller. So, this is the texture, similar one. The surface of the rock is showing you some vesicles. So this will be called as structure. Surface of the rock showing you some features, similar one. The surface of the rock 
is now contained. The vesicles are vesicles filled by the secondary material, so it is amygdules, and the structure is amygdaloidal structure. Or we'll have flow structure. This is what we have the flow structure. So these are the uh, what we have the surface of the rock showing you some features, and that we call as the structures. So they may be large type of scale, or they may be a smaller scale. So here we have shown you one photograph which will be showing you the pillow lavas. So that is the huge one and uh, some uh, textures, structures we can see under the microscope. That will be, we are going to make uh, another video for that. But today we are going to see only the megascopic one. Now we'll go for the textures. Textures, microstructures which are there under, under the microscope. Micro textures, microstructure, we will help with the microscope we'll study. But not today, whatever we are going to study the the megascopic textures and structure that will going to give you the highlight of physiochemical condition under which that particular rock has been formed. So here we have shown you the obsidian. Yes, so obsidian is what? It is a glass, 100% glass. You can see now very clear, shining, vitreous one, showing you conchoidal fracture. So in that photograph, it is very clear, conchoidal fracture is there. Yes, that is there and it is glass. So 100% glass and second one for periodic texture. So these are the things which will be shown you. The next one, the four inherent characters which are there, which based on that the rock is going to show you the textures. So textures will be controlled by the first factor is crystallity, granularity, shape of the crystal and the mutual relation of the crystal or between the crystal and grain, how this relation. So the characters three and four group together as a fabric. So what is that? Three and four, that is shape of the crystal and mutual relation of crystal and the glass. So that is going to make you the fabric. And the tear of igneous rock is said to be a function of its crystallinity, granularity and fear. So tear will be called as crystallinity, granularity and fabric. So that will be the about that particular part. Now first we'll see the crystallinity. What is the crystallinity? This is the property expressed by the proportion of crystals in the class. If there is a 100% crystals are there, if a rock contains 100% crystals, there is no glass, then 100% glass crystals are there, then it is called as hollow, means 100%. Hollow crystalline, the rock contains 100% crystal. So, hollow crystalline, that is the example, is the granite. The granite, I will show you the granite now, 100% crystals will be there. So this is the best rock to be uh, studied and this is the, going to give you the texture also, particular one, granitic texture or epigranal textures. Rocks like obsidian contain 100% glass. Here we have this particular mag of lava, magma come on the surface, lava, lava has erupted on the surface and whatever the volatile matter, gaseous, all these material, they will be escape. and due to that what is happening? There is a, whatever the pressure, temperature which have been maintained by this particular volatile material has been evaporated. Immediately the uh, temperature of the lava come down and surrounding temperatures also around 30, say 0 to 50 degrees. So in whichever the area the magma, lava has been erupted, so that lava has rapidly cooled down and there is no center of crystallization has been formed and that particular magma has rapidly cooled down from the labile and metastable stage so that there is no center of crystallization has formed so there is a hundred percent crystal will be there then these rock what we are going to call as hollow means hundred percent highly it means a glass so hundred percent glass is there then it is called as hollow hyaline rock it is a hollow hyaline hundred percent crystal hollow crystalline rock 100% glass is there, hollow hyaline. Now in between, there may be variation of percentage, whether the crystal may be 80 per 90%, 80%, 70%, 60 50 40 whichever, another one, there will be proportion. So there will be admixture of the crystals as well as the glass. If such thing we are going to see in that rock, then these type of rocks are called as hypo, misara, mero, uh, hypo or mero crystalline or hypo mero hyaline. So any term we can use it out. Hypo or mero crystalline or hypo mero hyaline. Whichever we are going to uh, uh, easy to remember, you can write down. So here we have the crystal, 100% crystal. Here we have 100% glass is there. So that is the 
uh, given you the significance. So the crystallinity of a rock depends upon what? The first important factor is the rate of cooling of magma as well as lava. So how is the magma and the lava? What is the difference between lava and magma? Magma, the, uh, the pyroclastic material which is present below the surface, if that material is come on the surface, then we call it lava. So there is the two videos I have been uh, prepared and uploaded. One is lava, uh, magma, and second one is lava and magma. So those who are interested, they can go to this my channel and see the folder in this rock. There you can get this particular uh, videos are there. The second one important viscosity of the magma, depending upon how much silica is there in that rock. If silica is more than that, it is behave like a viscous, like a oil. Yes, it is a similar one. If you put a one or two drops of oil on a slope, we find out that oil will slowly and after a certain distance it will stop. But in the same way on that slope, if you put one or two drops of water, water comes and it will aim and it will reach first at the water. So there will be depending upon that particular silica. If the more silica is there, it is behave like a what we have the oil. And if there is a less silica is there, then it is behave like a what water. So the viscous what we have is the oil factor what we have got the acidic magma. So acidic magma will not travel a long distance. If huge batholit we are going to get out. Magma erupted that will going to give the batholit. Whereas the basaltic magma is erupted, then it is travel a long distance and here we can get the flow. So the best example is the Deccan trap. For that, we are going to see the so here a slow rate of cooling and slow so low viscosity of magma favor the formation of the crystal. Such condition will exist at a greater depth, but that will be uh, for the plutonic rock. Hollow crystalline rock will be formed at a greater depth, and that is what we have is the granite rock. Come to the next one, a fast cooling that the magma come on the surface, high viscosity, the magma travel a long distance, and there there is no chance to get the center of crystallization, and crystals are not formed only 100%. We are going to get the glass and hollow hyaline. These particular uh, uh, rocks we are going to get in the form of dikes or seals or intermediate depth or lavas in the earth surface. The grain size of igneous rock varies widely and it depends primarily on the rate of cooling of magma or lava. The rocks described as phaneric. Yes, there will be phaneric and a phaneric. Phaneric or phenolic, uh, phenolocrystalline. If there is the mineral grains can be easily distinguished with your own eye. Yes, here in this particular granite, with the one or two properties we can identify the coarse grain, we can identify plagioclase, we can identify the biotide and we can identify the horn grain. So when you are going to identify this mineral with your own eyes, then this particular rock we call as phaneric rock or phenerocrystalline. But if you could not uh, identify any single crystal, the crystals are very fine grain and only if you have to take the cross uh, section, slide at your take and uh, under the microscope when you are going to study, then you can see the mineral, what are the composition is there. Then you can't see with that eye, so they are called as aphanetic rocks. These are aphanetic. So phenetic, aphanetic or pheno, uh, phenetic rocks. The phenetic rocks are divided into basis of their average mineral grain size. They're based on the grain size, this particular phenetic rock they are divided into two categories. One, what we have, say uh, fine grain, which is the less than one millimeter. Uh, the rock will be, the phenetic rock is divided into the three divisions first based on the diameter which is less than one millimeter it is called as fine grain if it is between less than one to five millimeter it is a medium grain and less than five to thirty it is called as the coarse and more than that it is there then it is a very coarse and that is the only we are going to get in the pegmatites and that is not a, a diameter maybe three meters the big sheets of mica five meters big sheets we can Yet, and India is the number one producer and myself has visited the pegmatite uh, mines and I have gone up to 850 feet uh, within that mine, Azaribad, so that is there. So that is what we have, the fine grain, medium grain, coarse grain and very coarse grain. And very coarse grain only find in the pegmatite and these pegmatites are intermediate rock. Whereas plutonic, they are at a greater depth, we have to get a very coarse, but if we compare, 
the whatever the grain size of that particular fluid it can if you compare the intermediate the what we have the pegmatite will find out the grain size of the pegmatites are very large how it has happened because the rate of cooling of that particular pegmatite magma has cooled down to 20 more more than that uh, times than the what we have the time which is taken for crystallizing the uh, minerals within the uh, plutonic rocks because here whatever the residue magma is remaining in that residue magma most of the material which is there it is a volatile material gases material which is compressed and once they compress they will not easily uh, reduce the temperature of that particular uh, magma so there is a rate of cooling will be decrease rapidly more than 20 times than what we have the plutonic and due to that whatever the residual magma which is remaining in the pegmatite so in that we have to form the pegmatite it is a huge sheets of mica we are going to get due to the pegmatite that is the difference so the next one is granularity the rate of cooling and the viscosity of the magma the granularity of the rock can be depend molecular concentration of the mineral concept what will be the molecular concentrations are there within that particular magma what is the sio2 al2o3 fe2o3 feo mgo cao mno tio2 p2o5 these are the nine important elements are there if you have to know about them so depending upon their concentration what uh, amount is there so depending upon that we are going to get the large grains or the smaller uh, uh, concentration gives us a smaller one next one shape of the crystals or minerals it is important criterion for describing and interpreting the textures of the rock in a hollow crystalline rock what is happening all the crystal which are there more or less of the same size the crystals are a more or less same size hollow crystalline but depending upon if they are 100% you had the crystals are there 100% you had the crystals are there then it is called as idiomorphic texture ideal is ideal crystals are ideal whether six sided or eight sided form uh, minerals are there then we are going to get idiomorphic textures the rock the whole of this slide rock shows idiomorphic in case there will be 100% or are the subidal crystals in that subidal flaky shape uh, flaky form lat shape form or we have the flaky form elongated form if such type of minerals are there 100% that that particular if uh, the hollow crystalline rock will be called as hypidiomorphic texture hyp means half hypidiomorphic only the side edges may be present whatever the six or eight are there out of this only half edges are present so the perfectly not developed the crystal that's why hypidiomorphic and in case 100% we have rounded or irregular crystals are there that is called as the unhydrated crystals there in that anel crystal rounded and irregular crystals are there then it is called as allotriomorphic so we have hypidiomorphic then allotriomorphic then uh, what we have idiomorphic shape of the mineral in an igneous rock is partly controlled by atomic structures and partly by the condition under which it has to be grown the growth of a eohydro crystal is favored in a thinly liquid magma which allows sufficient freedom of movement for the decided by the position of the sequence of crystallization of the mineral from the magma the earlier form mineral therefore have form euhydral shapes while later form minerals encounter as a interference from and many as grain around it and hence they are forced to assume irregular shapes of magma which are only form accessory mineral like apatite zircon and rutile they are the euhydral shape of crystals rapid cooling in a dry magma often yields to unable grains while the rapid crystallization of viscous magma viscous magma produce radiating cluster of needles radiating cluster of needle shaped grains that is the spherulites study of the distribution of needle grains and their shapes are mutual relation between these grain between the grains and glass provide information about the fabric of the rock based upon the type of the fabric several texture have been recognized and the basic textures what we have is the equigranular texture in equigranular texture intergrow texture flowage or directive textures now what is the equigranular texture equi means equal so all the grains are more or less they are equal in size for example here we have a rock granite more or less the grains are equal in size 
and this texture of this rock is called as equigranular texture. Only one rock is showing you that equigranular texture. So this nanite uh, texture is now instead of falling as equigranular, it is called as granitic texture. Whereas in equigranular textures, you can show. I'll show you the best example we have in our department. That is the in equigranular the porphyritic texture, large grain embedded by, surrounded by the small crystal that is in equigranular texture that is the porphyritic textures then intergrowth, flowage, directives these are there these textures are also known as intergrain textures and display between the two grains when the two major grains equigranular texture now when the major uh, minerals in a rock are more or less equal size and the rock set to be a equigranular textures and they may be a pandeomorphic, hypodeomorphic, or halotype, all types will be there. Uhydral crystal, subhydral crystal, unhydral crystal, then this is what we have, the equigranular texture. Best example is the granite. I shown you the sample also, I can see the photograph, where you can see the granite is very clear, more or less of the same size. Already we have seen now that part, so I am not going to make out. In equigranular texture, these are focusing about the difference in their origin where these crystals have been formed. So the genesis have the mixture. Earlier one in equipranular, they are all plutonic one. At a great, greater, greater depth that these uh, minerals are crystallized. But here in the case of equigranular textures, the whatever the crystals are there, they are crystallized at a different level. For example, initially the magma is there within the magma chamber, some few phenocris, the large crystals are crystallized and sudden there is a changes has happened, the magma comes out to uh, just erupted uh, below the surface, then there will be the remaining magma which is remaining has been crystallized in a smaller size and these crystals will be surrounding that particular if we are around that uh, large crystal which are formed. Again the magma erupted, now earlier mineral which are formed and now remaining liquid which is there, the residual liquid, crystallize a fine crystal and they will be surrounding that particular earlier formed mineral. And to do that, we are going to get the equigranular textures. And in that equigranular textures, the first and simple one is the porphyritic textures. The large crystal, the phenocris, is surrounded by the small crystal, very fine one. The large crystal are crystallized at the greater depth within the plutonic chamber. But now, along with that of minerals, phenocris, uh, the residual magma come on the surface. Now here come on the surface, and these fine crystals have been formed, and they will be uh, so arranged along that last large shape of crystal. And due to that, we are going to get the porphyritic texture. Similar one, we have the poiglitic texture. Large crystal will be embedded by the smaller crystal. So that is the, depending upon the arrangement, we have porphyritic texture and the poiglitic texture. You can see the porphyritic texture in that will be called as inequigranular textures, crystalline, crystalline sometimes glass also may be present. Yes, porphyritic which will be there. So they may be crystallized at a depth or they may be at the intermediate level or they may be on the surface. So here the basalt which is there, which is a volcanic rock, but some of the power, then the hypervessel is the dolerite. So these two are showing you the porphyritic texture. Basalt consists of plagioclase, olivine, augite, as a phenocryst, and they may be also smaller grain in the ground mass. The development of a texture with the different grain size can be explained with the result of the two stages of crystallization of, of the cooling, which may be formed. One at a greater depth, and then we have on the surface, that is a plutonic one, and the very volcanic or hypervessel, which may be going to form and do that, these minerals will be going to form and they surrounded that particular. That is the megaporphyritic basalt or uh, 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 globinoporphyritic basalt, vitrophytic uh, porphyritic basalt. So these are the varieties of the porphyritic basalt are based upon what condition they have been crystallized. But for the aqua, we are not going into the details about that, but this is the interesting one. Those who want to uh, make as a career, Hereafter, the hydrology and pathology, these are the two important uh, tech, uh, branches are there along with the stratigraphy. So that should be a very base and on the basis of that you can make your foundation and go for us uh, what we have the advanced uh, courses. But the basic you should know very well about 
the pedagogy as well as the pedagogy. And when the magma entered the country of at a shallow depth, it intruded as the lava and it cooled down rapidly, at forming the fine grain crystals or uh, fine grain crystals. Sometimes completely we are going to get a glass and do that. No central crystallization of form. That uh, lava has completely cooled down and there is no chance to uh, have the sufficient time in labile or metastable. It is rapidly gone down, so there is no center of crystallization. So, element, uh, whatever the elements are there, they are not contracted. Only glass has been formed and that is what we call as highly. So, this is what we have the glassy and the best example what we are showing normally in the practical is the obsidian, that is the one, best one, which shows you the glassy uh, structure and uh, conchoidal fracture, the second one is the histo. These are the two uh, best examples for the glassy textures, perfect one. You can see this one, if you don't see in that particular specimen, but in the photograph, you can very clear conchoidal fractures and vitreous luster, that is there. Now, next one, we'll see about the structures of igneous rock. A large scale, easily recognizable igneous textures which are visible in the naked eye, known as the structures, that is the surface of the rock, like my hand, is showing you some features, some skin showing you some texture is there, yes, some structure is there, that will be called as the structures, whether rocky, ropey lava, pillow, flow, joints, or columnars, all these which we are going to break out, these are the structures. Powery lava, lofty lava, ropey lava, pillow one, you can see the photograph very clearly. When you see uh, any videos in uh, YouTube, just click this name, you'll find out there will be two, three minutes. Videos are there, you can watch them and enlighten how these are formed. Pillows, ropey lava, blocky and pahovi lavas. Like textures, uh, like the textures, structure provide valuable information again uh, for the genesis of the rock. Smaller structures like a vesicle, some angles, result just as a position of two textures in a single rock. We are going to get the combination, vesicular as well as a mangle. When the magma is erupted on the surface, it is a lava. Now, maximum, say 80%, whatever the volatile gases material is there, it is evaporated. Remaining 20% gases material is there, it is there in, within that particular lava. And now, thin film has started been crystallizing on the surface like a film in the form creates a pressure and that creates the pressure whatever the gases are there they wanted to escape they are escaping in the form of crack or in the form of bubbles and these bubbles are preserved as it is and going to form as a vesicular basalt they may be of any shape and these vesicles are interconnected a pipe like a channel will be formed once these vesicles are filled by the secondary material that is in the rainy season whatever the water can dissolve the material NACHALAP that material will be dissolved or deposited in this particular cavities and once the water is evaporated whatever the content has brought it is deposited so in years together cycles together all these vesicles are filled by the secondary material that is called as zeolites and after that the vesicle is now called as amygdules once it is filled by the secondary material and the structure is called as amygdalizer structures. And if these vesicles are interconnected like a pipe, then we have pipe-like amygdalizer basalts. So here we have a vesicular basalt as well as you are going to see the amygdals and similar one we have a pipe-like amygdalizer basalt. You can see very clear in this particular area. We have been staying in Pune. This is the heart of uh, what we have the Deccan trap results and we are going to get plenty of wherever you go to the any hill area where you can see this type of things you are going to normally see now. Observe it all and just recollect your observation. So this is there. So these are normally happen in the volcanic rock. So low pressure at a near surface of the partial release, expansion, dissolved water and the volatiles and vesicular structures. Vesicles and amygdalas, these are the samples from our departments. We have been put over there. Due to this, steam bubbles form which the, are preserved as a small cavities on a rock and they will be consolidated. And these cavities or whites may be of different shapes. They may be size, may be different, but these vesicles will be there and that structure will be called a vesicular. Vesicular, and when the basalt is showing, vesicular basalt. 
we call this as uh, part of that. Similarly, right on it also show that. So these are the things which will be going to make out the interconnected part that already we have seen. So about this particular part we have seen now, like the microlloid structure that also we have seen. Next one, blocky lava or ropey lava, ropey lava. The surface of two different lavas may not appear similar. Even the surface of a single lava may appear very different at a different place. See, say today the magma is erupted on the surface as a magma. What will be, if you take out the sample, analyze, see that what is the content. But after again a week, magma is poor. Take out the sample, that magma, uh, the lava sample, you'll find out there is a drastic change in there in the composition. So, on the basis of that, what material is erupted, we are going to get the structure of blocky lavas, like the blocks are there, Hawaiian island that we are going to show you, ropey lava that will be, we are going to see in Ireland, volcanoes erupt, uh, it is continuously erupting again, it goes uh, in, the, in the Hawaiian also, we are going to get the ropey holes, both one is there. So these are non homogeneity may be due to variation in viscosity, chemical composition and difference in the rate of cooling. They are going to have that particular uh, very rough and irregular angular blocks which will be of a different sizes will be there and the effect of tumbling crowded mass of rock described approximately as a blocky lava. Hawaii is the best example. You can see that video on the YouTube. If you have the interest, you can go on the any uh, anyone's uh, video can uh, see that wrinkle, ropey form that will be there. Sure, like a radial crack, you are going to get the uh, in the ropey lava as a pahovi lava. That will be best. You can see the pillows one. This particularly the magma is poured within the ocean, and this will be go rich in what we have the soda. These are lava flows are there, and these are called as pillars. And once they are uh, erupted in the ocean, they go settle down and they will be one above the other. They have been com closely, compactly packed pillows, shape structure will be there of a several feet across. And that, that is going to give you the pillow structures. And that is the best one you can see pillow structures, fine grained crust, abundantly vesicles commonly formed in the pillow surface, splitic lava extruded in the sea floor that we have been seeing. You can see now those area where we are going to break out that pillow structures. Then the flow structure. Yes, here we have the rhyolite flow. Those who are going to the Rajasthan, that part, Jaisalmer, at the port of the Jaisalmer, we are going to get this flow structure. Rhyolite is there. You have to see very clearly or observe that particular part. Very fine crystals. Yeah. You can see that particular flow. This pattern is called as a directly of flow structures. Yes, Takai crystal will be there in that particular part. Columnar result. Yes, or columnar joints. When the magma is poured on the surface or just below the surface, there is a center of crystallization. Elements are contracted, a tension is created perpendicularly, a joint has been formed. Similarly, from this side it is there, tension created. So, due to that, polygonal cracks have been formed on the surface, and these cracks not only present on the surface, they go into the deeper part and the whole. That particular lava will show you the columnar structures. You can see this is the best example is the Ireland. You can see in that Ireland, you can click out in the Google, find out uh, columnar uh, joints which are there, uh, basalt which is very nice, perfectly. I have seen in my own when I have been visited uh, US, I have seen columnar basalt in uh, one of the place when I visited. This is what we have the photograph I have been go here and they have been normally found in flows, dikes and silk. Uh, we have uh, one research paper also on pencil joints in basalt in my research area and we have been uh, published in the current science with my colleagues are there. So that is there. So hexagonal or polygonal cracks is going to form. So that part will be the uh, half. Uh, now it's very important from here here we have to remember the definitions. First one. First definition of texture, it is a mutual relation of the crystals may, uh, uh, within that particular rock and along with the glassy material. Similarly, what is the uh, texture that is going to highlight on the genesis and the environment. The second one, it is been what is the structure is there, surface of the rock showing you some features, then 100% crystal, hollow, crystalline, 100% glass. Hollow hyaline, 
then raw content may have minerals as well as glass may have crystalline then intrinsic describe the rock describe phenetic or phenocrystalline if we can see with your own eyes and if you could not see with your own eyes that means the whatever the rock contain the mineral there are very fine uh, crystals then it is called as the rock is called as affinitic holo crystalline rock 100% crystals they may be uidal then it is idiomorphic if there is the subidal crystal hypidomorphic or mero crystal mero uh, morphic uh, rock uh, textures then the allotropic when there is no uh unidal crystals are the rounded and uh, irregular crystal allotropic so these are the points you have to remember that the major mineral which are based on equigranular textures in equigranular textures that is rocky ropy pillow like a things columnar uh, these are the structures that the uh, vesicular basalt pipe like amygdala basalt amygdala basalt these are the thing which we have been cover today that is the megascopic textures and structures of igneous rock I hope this is clear. Thank you. Have a nice day.